Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here, and I'm back today with a new Necron, the Hexmark Destroyer. I'm really excited about this model. I think he looks really awesome. He's like a multi-armed cowboy that like shoots back and like has really good overwatch and everything. So very excited about this model. I've been painting a lot of Underworlds models recently, so ready to dive back into the Necron world. Anyway, let's get started. I picked up this model uh, by getting the Imperium Warhammer magazine, issue 85. I've talked about this magazine to death, uh, and it's nearly run out of issues. It finishes at issue 90, so I'm at the very tail end, which is kind of sad because it's been a great source of cheap Warhammer models, and the variety is, you know, keeps things interesting when it's kind of you not picking the models, and it's, you know, up to the fate. This is the instructions and it has like interesting parts of the law and details around the model, which is, you know, always good to read because, uh, you know, it's $20 dues, Australian dollars um, for the, this. So it's a huge saving over Games Workshop and you get all this extra stuff as well. So it's a really good bargain, but we'll need the building instructions for these to build the model. So I'm just using the Citadel clippers and the Citadel plastic glue here and just following the instructions. This model was actually fairly straightforward. It wasn't too complicated. The model itself is really exciting. It has a pistol on its attack, so it means it can shoot at close range. It uh, can overwatch even if you've already overwatched in that round and it hits on twos, which is really powerful. And then it has this really cool like shoot back, back uh, ability where if it gets shot at, it can basically shoot the unit that shot it. So very excited to try this out on the battlefield the next opportunity. One thing I didn't like about the model was the pose that it comes in. The box art and the way it's kind of built is very hunched over, which I think is kind of cool, but I think that the model looks really good. I didn't really want to lose a lot of the detail on the front from him being, you know, hunched over the base. So I've just, I'm not really very good at kit bashing, but I have this green stuff with Gap from Green Stuff World, and I thought if I just try and position the torso in a little bit more standing up straight position, like he's being disciplined for slouching, uh, might be a little bit cool, a little bit different. So here I'm using a flat black um, primer from Rust-Oleum. You can get this at your local hardware bunning store. Get yourself a sausage as well. People in the comments aren't big fans of this because they say that the paint is very thick and you lose some of the details. Uh, but I've never really noticed on these Necrons at least um, that. But just calling it out there. I'm also trying something a little bit different and starting with Lead Belcher. So because I do the Sharakan Dynasty theme, there's a lot of brass and I usually start with that color. But with this model, I thought it might be a little bit more interesting to try and pull out all the silver details first. And it was a little bit tricky. I probably would not do this again if I had the choice. I think it was too difficult to know which parts were silver just when everything is the same prime color. So in hindsight, I think, you know, I'll go back to starting off with brass but it was kind of cool. I did like the black and silver theme. So this is the Rune Lord Brass that I was talking about. My pot is almost dead and emptied and dried out, but I use what's left in the pot. My main gripe with the Games Workshop Citadel paint range is the pots are really difficult to work with. So I'm just trying to apply it in anywhere that I think has kind of tough Necron armor. I use this kind of color scheme in my head for the different metals, for the different strengths. 
So brass is kind of normal armor plating. Silver is for delicate wires. Uh, the really shiny silver is like ornate. Gold is also like ornate decoration. And then this rhinox hide, which is this brown color. This is for the hardest of the hard metals. So when you apply it over the black primer, it kind of creates like a titanium or like a very like, you know, iron kind of color. And then when you do a silver edge highlighting with it, really does kind of make it look metallic. And I usually do that on the feet, feetsies or the claws of the model, anywhere that would be doing a lot of um, strength required. So this Runefang steel is what I was talking about before around the ornate decorations. So the Necron are very hierarchical in their, you know, society structure. So the more bling they have, the higher ranking they are. So I thought it was kind of fitting for this guy to have a silver uh, decoration, which is similar to the Immortals. And I think this dude has to be like higher ranking than the Immortals with the amount of guns that he has. So here I'm using Warpstone Glow. You can just use Moot Green, <laughs> getting the cat hair out. Um, but you need to do two coats at least when you're applying the green over the black. So what I've been doing is been using this Warpstone Glow as the first coat and then coming back with Moot Green. And the reason why I don't do two coats of Moot Green is that if you leave a little bit or you miss a little bit because it's like really hidden in the model, it creates kind of like a gradient of green. So, it, you know, rather than just having everything, the one light green shade, you can have this darker shade. And then here I realized I completely forgot to paint the armor on the hands. And so I've come back with Runelorn Brass to do that. But again, yeah, really should have just done Runelorn Brass to begin with. Because I didn't, I don't normally miss this sort of stuff when I start with it. And that's fine that I'm doing this because the Warpstone Glow needs to dry. I'm also cracking out the Korax White here and I'm painting the face. So kind of like the Death Marks and a few other of the Necron units that I've painted, uh, I use white kind of as like a face paint color. But I'm actually really happy with how this got applied. I'm really terrible at faces but I managed to kind of apply the white everywhere except the eye sockets. I did that by kind of making sure that the paint wasn't too thick or thin, but just applied and stuck really easily over the model. So now that the eyes, uh, the face is ready, uh, it's time to go over with the moot green. So I'm just applying that over everywhere that I did warp stone glow. And, you know, anywhere that's kind of hard to reach or um, like in this globe, for instance, the base of the globe, I'm just leaving the warpstone glow. I'm not really covering it. And then I'm going over all the wires and everything. Um, and that's what I really like about this model is he does look quite different to the other Necron units. I know he's part of the Destroyer cult. So they kind of transform their bodies. And yeah, here I'm just trying to just do a dollop of moot green into each of the eye sockets. <laughs> and he has so many. Um, so I'm just trying to balance my hand. You can see on the back just to try and reduce the shaking and make sure that I don't get it anywhere. But I think this is probably the best Necron eyes that I've ever painted. So I was really happy with these when they um, all dry. It looks really good. And then there's also kind of, these guns are a little bit different from like the Gore's energy blasters that I've been painting in terms of like the Tesla, I'm uh, sorry, the Gore's energy kind of runs to the top of the gun, but then the gun itself is kind of silver and black. But I thought it was too black 
and it's a bit hard to kind of see the detail. So I've got Dark Reaper here, which is a layer paint, and I'm just kind of going over the edges of the weapon just to pull out some edge highlighting, which I do really struggle with, but I just thought leaving the weapon completely black of the primer color just was missing a lot of the detail in these guns. And it's hard to see on the camera, but in real life it does kind of look quite good. And then you can hardly tell from the pot, but I'm just getting some Retributor armor here, which is a gold color, and just painting the sigil on the chest. But because we've kit bashed a slightly different position, you can see the sigil a little bit better. And I've started painting any sort of circle in the Necron armor or weaponry uh, with gold as well. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, doing a lead belcher um, edge highlight on the uh, Rhinox hide just makes the brown color read as more of a metallic titanium iron color. Um, without the edge highlighting, it does kind of look a little bit weird. And then finally, Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown shade. I use that to go over all the brass uh, color, and it just kind of deepens and enriches the color to make it look more like a living metal rather than like a plasticky uh, toy, which is obviously what it is in real life, but I find that it makes it a little bit better. I would like to try the... I think there's like a Cryptek armor shade or something, but I don't know if they even make it anymore. So I've been using Agrax Earth shade, but if you um, use that, let me know in the comments if you think it's better or not. One thing I did do differently as well with this model is I decided to do the base first because this one comes with some base decoration as part of the kit. I thought it's probably good to try and make sure that it all works out and ready to go when the model's finished. I've been really spoiled uh, with the Underworld models that I've been doing. If you're interested, you can check out the videos here. And they come with complete bases, so basically the base is already fully textured, it kind of tells a story and a scene, and you can just plop your model on top. And I, it's so good because I really struggle with bases. I've done a lot of videos on bases. And, um, you know, I think just taking that decision out just saves me a lot of stress and anxiety. But here you can see I've just had some PVA glue. And I've glued the uh, base decoration on. And then I've just sprinkled some of this desert sand and stone um, which is very expensive dirt I got from my local game store. And then I'm just kind of sweeping off any of the stuff. And I put a little bit of blue tack down to make sure that I had a flat area for this foot joint, which kind of worked. However, I didn't account for the fact that it really needs to be touching the outside. So when you actually stand it on, there isn't enough room on the base um, for it to be that close to the center. Um, so if you are doing that, I probably would recommend, yeah, making sure that it's closer to the rim and not uh, towards the center like that. Um, otherwise, what I would normally do is just cut the foot off from the decoration or the rock, as Games Workshop loves to use rocks for this. And then you can just position it any way you want. So I've used the flat gray primer there, as you saw, but I'm using some Storm Vermin fur on a dry brush, which is just an old makeup brush that I stole from my wife. And I'm just kind of just giving it a very light coat. And it's kind of a bit of a weird thing to dry brush with a darker color over the top, but I'm really just trying to create some variation so it's not all one gray color because it looks a little bit weird if it's all the same gray. Plus if we need to touch up, we can just use Storm Vermin fur later. I also put a little bit of purple um, on top of that to make it kind of look a little bit more alien because I'm kind of going for an alien like moon or planet. And, you know, with color theory, purple and green are kind of opposite. So I find that it does help some of the Necron with the green gals energy or gauze energy really pop off. 
but it's a very subtle on this one. Some of Sometimes I do this and it's very purple, but today it was just a very light one. And then something I've also been doing, which is painting the rims a bad and black. I've always painted them black because I find that it frames the model really well but I've started painting the rims a lot earlier usually it was like the last thing I would do but I find it's hard to actually paint the base while the rims aren't black because it's so messy and ugly that I find now that it's better just to go straight and paint the rims and then I'm using Corax white which is the same color I used for the face of the Necron um, hex mark but here I'm just using it to paint this kind of part of the fallen building. Uh, I'm going to go for like kind of like a destroyed ruin so it matches my other scenery. And I'm just picking out some of the rocks that were kind of flat to make them also look like part of the debris. And then I'm using lead belcher and I'm painting this metal kind of grate that's part of the building and there's also these little scarab beetles that it's kind of hard to see um, but I really love this attention to detail that Games Workshop has so I'm just trying to pick out those scarabs and paint them but scarabs should be the brass color at least the wings part should be so I'm just quickly dabbing um, the Rune Lord brass over those as well, just so that they match the same color profile as my Necron army. And then I realized that uh, for my ruin building, which you can see this video here, uh, I use a red color for the kind of metal grates. So for me, I'm going to paint this um, red just so that it matches my other terrain pieces that I have. Um, even like the plasma site from the, dis uh, I think the destroyers, I can't remember the name of them, um, they, they also have this like red thing, so it just matches my other pieces, but obviously you can paint it any colour you want. And there's also a little skull that's kind of been pressed into the model, so I'm just using Rakoth Flesh for that, but you could use any white colour. So to make the white look like a ruined building, I'm using the Seraphim Sepia. If you don't have any, I'm sure Agrax Earthshade probably does an almost identical job. But this one kind of just creates a little bit more of like a weathered stone effect. And so I just thought I might as well use it since I own it. And it's kind of just transforms that um, into a kind of antiquity kind of color. I don't know if that's a real word. And then this is the Agrax Earthshade, so you could just put that over the white, um, but I'm putting that over the skull as well as the red to just darken it up and dirty it. It looked too uh, pristine before. And then obviously we can't forget that the little scarab beetles also have some um, energy in them, so just trying to put a little dot of green into their little power unit in the center of the model. And now it's time to glue it. So I'm using super glue to glue it. Usually I use plastic glue, but when I'm gluing it onto a base like this, super glue is a million times easier. And you can see the big rock at the back. I'm just trying to make it flush with the base so that it all sticks and works. One trick with the super glue is to store it in a Ziploc bag in the fridge so it doesn't dry out. It didn't sound like it would work, but it's actually been wonders. And then the base still looks a little bit boring, so I'm adding some foliage. I've got this alien turquoise uh, grass and this pink one, which I, I'm not really a big fan of this pink one. I don't know why I picked it um, for this model, but I think because it's such a big base, I thought, why not? But I'm actually ending up gluing my fingers together here. I probably, a pair of tweezers would have made this job a million times easier. But that's the model based and ready to go. But before I was finished, I thought I should go over the silver bits with Nuln oil. 
So there's the kind of neck and there's the weapon and all this stuff. Uh, this is a completely optional step, but I thought by doing this will help kind of create some shadows and some depth to the model. And it's a very quick step that doesn't take very long. I mean, there's so many jokes on the internet just about soaking your model in null oil to make it look better. But now that the weapons were darkened, I actually got the light colored silver, which is Runefang silver, or Runefang steel, sorry. And I went over and I just touched the center of the weapons just to kind of give it an edge highlight almost. Uh, but just where like the light would capture and naturally land on the weapon. And then here I've got Corax White and I'm just kind of applying this very sparingly on top of the Moot Green. Again, where like the light would naturally fall on the model. And I'm doing this as sort of like an edge highlight or to kind of create a third color in our green gradient. So we have that warp stone glow, blow, <laughs> glow, glow. Um, and then you also have moot green, which is kind of like a very bright green. And then finally this tesseract glow over the Corax white creates like a very like fluoro, almost yellowy green. And by having those three different things just makes like the weapon look like it's glowing and that, you know, it's surging with energy. Whereas when it's all one color, it can kind of look a bit two dimensional. I think it's not blended very well. I think if I was better at wet blending or just um, like applying thinner coats over it to kind of create a more even gradient would look even better. But I think that's a little bit beyond my skill level. But I find just um, applying this, you know, very light Corax white Tesseract Glow, really effective. So this is the finished product. I was really happy with how this turned out. I'm so happy that I kit bashed it and made him stand up straight. I think he looks really cool with his six guns and the base looks pretty awesome with a bit of uh, decoration. And skulls always make things look super badass. And yeah, I'm really happy with how he turned out. I'm glad that I've kind of got back into painting neck runs, um, but I have been really enjoying the underworld models as well. So if you haven't checked those out, I recommend um, having a watch. They're some really unique and interesting models. But let me know how you found this model, or if you've got any tips or feedback. It's really appreciated. I don't get a huge lot of views or subscribers, so every comment and everyone subscribing really helps the channel out. So thank you so much. Uh, if you can hit that button, it's completely free. and You can undo it at any time. Anyway, until next time, I'll catch you later. See ya. Bye.